Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion Node Breakdown. Today's node is the Transform node. And this is another DaVinci Resolve node available with Infusion. And it is not the Transform node that we're used to using up here in Fusion. It is not this node. So it is a different Transform node and it actually does more than just this. So let's go ahead and uh, go to our media and hit Shift Space and add a transform and if you notice we have this transform with the xf shorthand that is our fusion version but we have this transform down here with no shorthand which is the davinci resolve version so we're going to go ahead and add it and this transform node is basically a transform node but it operates a little differently so first off we have control modes whether we're using sliders or an interactive canvas or pins. So let's cover interactive canvas first. So what interactive canvas does is it gives you uh, this little display here. And if we uh, drag this, we can transform our footage. But we can also drag each one of these little quadrants. So if I select the middle, it's just going to move it around. If I select up top, it's going to skew if I select in the corner, it's going to yaw and skew. Same with each quadrant, it's going to do something different. So let's refresh this. Under interactive pins, what we do is we want to create pins. So if I say wanted to rotate around this dancer right here, I could throw a pin on her face and anything I do is going to rotate around that location of that pin. And if I hit reset canvas, I could reset. Now, if I wanted her full body pinned, I could uh, pin the top of her head, pin the bottom of her feet. And if I move around, you can see it's rotating and moving along those two pin axes. So if I reset this, same with if I do a pin up top, pin over here, if I rotate it and move it, it's rotating around all those pins. I added another pin right there, it would be rotating around all three pins. So that is using the interactive pin mode. And under those, you can uh, either show, auto hide, or uh, hide all your little pins. So let's go to sliders mode here and let's refresh our canvas. Under sliders, we can uh, change our position on the X, the Y, as well as zoom. We can also rotate it. We can change the width. We can change the height. And we can change the pitch. And we can change the yaw. Additionally, we can flip on the horizontal and flip on the vertical. So let's go ahead and refresh that. Now under our image adjustment, we have the ability to crop or uncrop. So if we select this, we can uh, crop the left. We can crop the right. We can crop the top and we can crop the bottom. Or we can unselect that and our crops go away. Now we also have edge softness and edge rounding. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, zoom this out. And let's go to edge softness. If I change the softness, you can see it's changing the softness of that edge, as well as being able to change the roundness of the edge. And down here under animation, the only option we have is motion blur. Now this isn't gonna add any motion blur to your footage unless everything is moving. So if I go to the uh, beginning and let's uh, change our Y position up to, uh, let's just say one, add a keyframe, Oop. add a keyframe, go to the end, make this minus one. Now we've got our animation going down and up. And if you look, we have motion blur. 
So if I turn this off, we have no motion blur. And just so you know, it's going to add it to your footage and to the borders. So if we zoom in here, and look at our borders and I increase this motion blur. You can see it's adding blur to the borders, but it is also adding motion blur to our actual footage. So if I decrease it and increase it, you can see it's adding that motion blur to everything. So if you play it, we're getting a little motion blur on that movement. So let's go ahead and refresh. Under advanced options, this is where we can change the bordering and uh, the composite of our footage. So if I move this over a little bit so we can see these borders, if we look right now, it's set on transparent, but I can turn it to reflect. So we can move it wherever we want. It's going to reflect. I can change it to wrap around or we can change it to replicate. Now this reflect is going to take place no matter what you do. So uh, if we go to our image adjustment and we change this roundness and uh, let's put this back in the middle and we change our zoom, you can see it's going to reflect everywhere. So if we go to our pitch in your yaw, you can see we have multiple pieces of footage being reflected, no matter how we change it. Same with wrap around. If we wrap around, it's going to wrap around and replicate. It's going to do some weird things with that replication. And if we add it on transparent, we're not going to get any additional uh, media. So the one thing about this transform node is it's not just to transform this one specific piece of footage, it's to transform one on top of the other. So that's what this green input is for. So if I want some footage on top of our original footage, let's go ahead and uh, reset this. I could take this footage and put it on the top. And now we're transforming this footage on top of our background input, meaning I can uh, Go ahead and go to our image. I can make it round, change the zoom. So now I've got two pieces of media playing. So I can move this wherever I want. And I have two pieces of media now playing. And additionally, all the extra stuff like uh, reflect is all going to uh, work as well. So that is the transform node from DaVinci Resolve. I will see you in the next node breakdown.